He leaves the 99. The overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. He chases me down, fights till I'm found. Woo! Couldn't earn it. Don't deserve it. But he still chases me down. <laughs> so this is the fuller verse of where we took our text from about the veil being lifted off her eyes. It's such an amazing picture of freedom. And, and like I said, I could live to be 99 years old, and there'll still be veils that the Lord would want to lift off my eyes because I don't have the full understanding of Jesus. It's, it's, it's bottom. There, you, know, you could never plumb the depths. You don't get to the bottom of all his knowledge of how he would want us to live. So it's a rich engagement to try, to try to learn more about what he wants for us. You'll never run out of material. Isn't that amazing? People hear you say that, and they, they have a hard time understanding it if they're not saved. But the dynamic of the Spirit means that there's multiple ways of understanding the truth of the Bible and multiple ways of applying it. And what he really doesn't want is that religious spirit, that, that rigor mortis of death that happens. You, your body stiffens when you die, and all of a sudden God's trying to have you be pliable in his hands to so use you in different ways, and you're like, oh, no, that can't be you, Lord. I know you told me to kill my son, so I have to do what you told me. Yeah, but I'm giving you another order now, and I'm telling you not to kill your son. <laughs> Proceeding word. So this is what Paul says again, back to 2 Corinthians 3. What was once glorious, or was glorious, no longer holds any glory because of the increasingly greater glory that replaced it. Doesn't mean that we throw out the Old Testament, okay? People get confused about this, so be really careful. He's not saying that. He's saying that the Old Testament was there to show us that there is a law and that in our own strength we cannot follow that law. All have sinned and fall short of being that obedient lover of God. Love you with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. I can't do that in my own natural ability. We fall short because of that sin that we inherited, okay? So it's not that we're throwing out the Old Testament. is that some of it's been fulfilled and some of it is there to teach us. That's what it's called, a schoolmaster to, to teach us. So we don't have to eat kosher anymore, we're told, in the New Testament, just as one example. All right? So it's an increasingly greater glory that's living inside of us. And here it is. The moment one turns to the Lord with an open heart, the veil is lifted. And they see. Here comes a heavy one. Now, the Lord I'm referring to is the Holy Spirit, and wherever he is Lord, there is freedom. Hmm. That's a little different than the way most of us heard it. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. But this is saying wherever he is Lord, <laughs> there is freedom. Ouch. Say ouch. <laughs> I know a lot of you are getting what I'm going to say is because it's not automatic. Because just because you got saved, there might be areas in your life where he's not fully Lord. Your mouth. <laughs> your closet. <laughs> that would be for the girls, not so much for the guys. <laughs> it's worse when it's the guys. Oh, I won't even go there. That's just too traumatic. <laughs> Come back, Holy Spirit. <laughs> right? Oh, man. There's a lot of areas of our lives Forgiveness, like if we, don't have a, if we don't have forgiveness down well, then he might not be Lord because we, we're still holding a grudge or, or we still want to see uh, vengeance against somebody. And he said, vengeance is mine, right? So there's a lot of ways our finances could be a, a, an idol. We could still be trusting in our finances. I heard a great saying from Bill Johnson. He said, how much is enough, right, when it comes to money? Because you have business people that make a lot of money and, they, and they'll say that, well, how much is enough? And he likes to turn it around and say, how much is too much? And when you have too much, that means you're trusting in the money instead of trusting in God. So the amount changes for everybody. It's different for all of us. But however much causes you not to trust God anymore. Because, but for God, you're not even alive today, right? So don't make it an idol. But look, wherever he is Lord, there's freedom. <laughs> oh, this is the rest of our lives. Wherever he's Lord, there's freedom. You can, you know, our friend Peter Wagner wrote a book about 17 different ways he changed his mind over things that he was teaching. And he was doing PhD students at Fuller Theological Seminary. They're not supposed to change their mind. They can't call their students and say, hey, by the way, that book I wrote, I change it, read the new version because I changed my opinion. But that's paradigm shift. He was teaching against Holy Spirit. The Lord opened his eyes that it was real and that he repented to his credit. 
He repented and said, no, look, there's another way of looking at this. Nothing wrong with that. That's a good thing. And then verse 18, I like to quote this often. It says, we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory. You could kind of hear Alan say that in his testimony today, that when he first got here, things weren't making so much sense. But then as he kept listening and hearing and, and touching his spirit, the three years that went by, I was contemplating the Lord's glory. And, and I have an unveiled face now because it's okay for me. I got a prophetic word. I'm not seeing it come to pass. But now I'm realizing why I'm not seeing it come to pass. And I can go after this thing. And I have people here who care that don't have an agenda when it comes to the counseling, you know, that piece about the prayer counseling. It's like, whatever it takes, as long as you're doing what we're asking you to do, like we can't keep enabling you if you're not willing to work it. But if you're willing to work it, keep coming back because you will see results. But you know what they say in AA, it only works if you work it. <laughs> What's happening? We're contemplating the Lord's glory and we are being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit, okay? So that increase in glory is the opposite of what Moses experienced. Religion will grind you into powder because you can't do all the law. You can't keep up with it. It's there to tell you you can't do it. It's there to, to pin you like a wrestler and say, give up. <laughs> you can't do this. And they needed that to know that. So now it's like this posture right here on our knees, serving. You want to be great in the kingdom? Serve. Don't look for the big ministry. Don't look for the big name. You just have something to say. Listen to me. And, and that's when you'll get the big name. That's when people will seek you out if you want it to last. And he's looking for fruit that remains. Amen? All right. So this is not going to be one of my three-hour sermons. But I just have a couple more verses. And then a handout. <laughs> Thank you for your mercy triumphs over judgment. <laughs> the next chapter, 4 in 2 Corinthians, says even if our gospel message is veiled, it's only veiled to those who are perishing. That should cause a twinge of love in your heart towards people who are perishing and cause you to say, you know what, I'm going to cast uh, this fear to the wind and I'm going to go talk to this person about the Lord. Because if I keep going year after year without ever saying anything, they're perishing. Their minds have been blinded by the God of this age, leaving them in unbelief. Their blindness keeps them from seeing the, dis the day spring light of the wonderful news of the glory of Jesus Christ, who is the divine image of God, right? Veil. There's a veil over their eyes. They can't see it. You can see it. You ask the Lord, what's the combination to the lock of their heart? How can I speak to them in a way that that veil will be lifted? For God who said all the way back, Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, let brilliant light shine out of the darkness. That light has cascaded into us, right? He's cascaded his light into us, the brilliant dawning light of the glorious knowledge of God as we gaze into the face of Jesus Christ. That doesn't make sense to an unbeliever. It makes a whole lot of sense to us, doesn't it? That's what I was talking about. You're, you're given this portion of light from Christ that never runs out. And the more dark people you're with, and I don't mean dark in, in that they're evil people, they just don't know the Lord. They still have a veil over their eyes, but that light is getting soaked into them. And they're wanting to know what you know and why you're different than the other people that they talk to. And Latoya, you know, again, she just talk, used some of that language, like, don't go on any interviews. <laughs> I'm not supposed to say this, but don't take another job for three weeks. Like, wink, wink. It's like, there's favor on your life, and I know there's favor on your life. And, and she wasn't haughty about it. She just knew she could rest in that place of, of her relationship with the Father who was helping her find that favor, the glorious light of the face of Jesus. 